different studio. Pick up your brush today. Welcome to the Ink Different Studio. This is Fiona. I would like to also welcome you to our Chinese calligraphy course, a captivating journey into one of the most ancient and respected forms of artistic expression. Chinese calligraphy is not just an art. It is profound cultural heritage, recognized globally for its artistic and historical value. This course will offer you an opportunity to delve into the elegance and depth of Chinese calligraphy, exploring its unique blend of written language and visual art. But this is not all. Chinese calligraphy is renowned for its therapeutic benefits, enhancing calmness, reducing stress, and improving mindfulness through the rhythmic motion in brush movements. These benefits make it not only a cultural exploration, but also a practice in mindfulness and personal tranquility. Our course will feature the classic Chinese text, the Thousand Character Classic, Qian Zi Wen. This text is not only a cornerstone for Chinese calligraphy training, but also a rich source of history and philosophy, making it perfect for both beginners and seasoned enthusiasts. The Qian Zi Wen, translated as the Thousand Character Classic, is a unique Chinese poem used as a premiere for teaching Chinese characters to children. It is renowned for its ingenious composition, wherein none of its 1,000 characters are repeated, Composed by Zhou Xingsi during the Southern and Northern Dynasty around the 6th century, the text is not just a linguistic tool, but also a collection of moral and philosophical teachings. The Thousand Character Classic has been used traditionally in Confucian teaching, providing a fundamental literacy resource that also encapsulates essential elements of Chinese culture and wisdom. Each line consists of four characters, with the lines grouped into sections for easier memorization. The content covers a wide range of topics, from the basics of the cosmos and the natural world to the principles of human conduct as the fundamental of statecraft. This text not only helps in learning Chinese characters, but also in appreciating the depth and breadth of Chinese literary tradition and cultural values. It has been an important educational text in China and other Eastern Asian countries, influenced by classical Chinese culture. Join us as we trace the strokes of history and artistry in our journey. Whether you're looking to broaden your artistic skills or immerse yourself in cultural heritage, this course promises to be both educational and enriching. Also, do not forget to follow this channel for our regular course updates. To create a comfortable and relaxing environment for our course, start by ensuring the room is quiet, with good lighting, a stable table, and comfortable chairs. Change into comfortable clothing and lay out the equipment, which I will introduce you shortly. The brush requirements can vary depending on the script. For both seal and clerical scripts, the best brushes are those with soft bristles that hold a gorgeous amount of ink, making gold hair brushes an ideal choice. However, for regular script, the same type of brushes used for seal and clerical scripts may be challenging for beginners because they are too soft. Writing certain strokes that require bursts of strength will demand significant practice. For regular script, we need a brush with a stronger core where, while still capable of holding a good amount of ink. Therefore, for regular practice, a mixed hair brush featuring weasel hair at the core and gold hair around it will be preferable. For writing very small characters, pure weasel hair brushes are the best option. As for running and cursive scripts, a brush with a relatively long head is ideal. This allows the brush head to move freely on the paper, enabling smooth, flowing lines. A mixed hairbrush can still be an easier option for beginners. If you are a complete beginner and don't wish to invest too much in brushes, 
I recommend this well-balanced, price-friendly brush set available in my shop, which can satisfy most of your needs, especially seal, clerical, and regular scripts. If you specifically prefer practicing running and cursive scripts, this other brush set will also work nicely. You can simply scan the QR codes on the screen. However, if you have specific preferences, feel free to contact me directly for personalized recommendations. I'll be happy to help. That said, I sincerely need to emphasize the importance of brush quality. I wholeheartedly recommend investing in good quality brushes, as the selection of brush hair, material, and the treatment of the brush handles are critical factors that can make a significant difference in the brush's performance and ease of use. Using poor quality brushes from the beginning may lead to the development of bad habits, which could hinder your progress later on. For calligraphy practice, brushes are your most essential tools, even more important than the papers you will use. On the screen, you will see a list of the necessary supplies. Please make sure to prepare them accordingly so we can begin our calligraphy journey. Also, feel free to scan the QR code to visit my site where you will find a thoughtfully curated section of art supplies, books, and other valuable resources. Explore everything you need to enhance your artistic journey. Today, we're going to continue with the learning and writing of the Thousand Character Classic. What are the new characters of today? Let's go find out. The character Diao first appeared in the Oracle Bone script and bronze inscriptions of the Shang Dynasty. In the middle of the character is a component, Ren, person, and there is a curved component in the middle. The small seal script modifies the character based on the Oracle Bone script and bronze script, and the curved component was written in a shape of a bow, Gong. Its ancient form resembles a person carrying an arrow tied with a rope. Clerical script later adapted and streamlined the strokes accordingly. The exact origin of the meaning of diao is unclear, and scholars have differing opinions. Some believe that in ancient times, when a person died, they were wrapped in straw and buried in the wilderness to prevent wild animals from disturbing the body. Family members would guard the site with bows and arrows, symbolizing mourning for the deceased. Others believe that the oracle bone script and bronze script forms clearly depict the shape of a venomous snake, and that Diao originally represented a giant snake coiling around and biting a person. According to this interpretation, the ancient form of Diao conveyed the fear and despair of victims in such situations. There are many other interpretations, and scholars' views on the character's structure vary. Thus, the original meaning of Diao has been the subject of much debate. In ancient times, Diao was commonly used to express condolence, especially in the context of mourning the dead or offering comfort to those who had suffered a loss. Additionally, Diao can mean to hang, and by extension, it came to signify raising or lowering someone with a rope. The character Nin first appeared in Oracle Bone script during the Shang Dynasty. The upper part of the character resembles an eye, and the lower part looks like a sharp object, such as a needle, piercing the eye, causing blindness in one eye. It is suspected that Nin is the original form of the character Mang, which means blind. Why does the character Min depict an eye being blinded? In the Oracle Bone script period, Min did not yet specifically refer to the common people. These individuals whose eyes were blinded may have been criminals, prisoners of war, or slaves owned by the ruling noble class. The noble blinded one eye of these individuals to prevent them from escaping where they were forced to labor. Therefore, Min originally referred to slaves or war captives. Over time, its meaning expanded to refer to common people, in contrast to officials or rulers. Diao Min means to mourn for or synthesize with the people. The character Fa is composed of the components Ren, person, and the weapon Ge, dagger axe. 
In oracle bone script and bronze inscriptions, the blade of the ge clearly intersects with the head of the person, symbolizing the act of cutting someone's neck with the weapon. The original meaning of fa was to cut a person's neck with a dagger axe. In the Qin Dynasty's seal script, the structure of the character still shows ren and ge. However, it is important to note that ge and ren are now separated, with the blade no longer positioned over the person's neck. This change makes it harder to infer the meanings of decapitation from the structure of the character alone. Clerical and regular script forms of fa were developed from the seal script and therefore retained this structure. The character zui first appeared in bronze inscriptions and is composed of zi, means self, and xin, a tool or weapon. The script of Warring States period is the same as the bronze script. During the Qin Dynasty, it was written as zui, but Emperor Qin Shi Huang changed it to zui because of the first character resembled Huang Emperor, and he wanted to avoid this similarity. Therefore, the character Zui was used. And in the seal script, it is composed of two parts, Wang, which represents the idea of capturing or apprehending, and Fei, which symbolizes something illegal, indicating the apprehension of criminals. The original meaning of the character as a verb is to capture or to punish offenders. In clerical script, both forms Zui and Zui coexisted, but in regular script, Zui became the standard form. The character also evolved with the current top component replacing its original form. Fa Zui means to punish wrongdoers or criminals. In summary, Diao Min, Diao means to mourn or to express empathy, and Min refers to the people. In this context, Diao Min refers to the idea of a ruler or government expressing empathy for the suffering of the people. It implies that a good ruler should care for and mourn the hardship faced by the population, showing compassion for their well-being. Fa Zui Fa means to punish or to attack, and Zui means crime or sin. Thus, Fa Zui refers to the act of punishing or taking action against wrongdoers or those who commit crimes. In this context, it emphasizes the responsibility of the ruler to maintain justice by holding criminals accountable for their actions. In the Thousand Character Classic, Diao Min Fa Zui emphasizes the dual responsibility of a ruler. On one hand, they must comfort the people and show compassion and care for their suffering ensuring that the population is treated with kindness and justice. On the other hand, the ruler must also punish those who commit crimes to maintain order and protect the integrity of the state. This phrase reflects a central Confucian idea of governance. Rulers should act both benevolently and justly. They should care for their people as a parent would for a child, benevolence, while also upholding laws and taking firm action against wrongdoing, justice. Diao Min Fa Zui describes the ideal rule for a ruler in Confucian thought, to emphasize with and care for the well-being of the people, while also punishing criminals to ensure order and justice. The balance between compassion and justice is seen as essential for maintaining a harmonious and prosperous society. In ancient China, all virtuous individuals possessed a compassionate heart and cared deeply for the world. And this compassion often manifested in two ways. First, they had the perseverance to restrain themselves and refrain from exploiting the people's resources. Second, they had the courage to risk their lives to overthrow tyrants and protect the people. When we look back at Chinese history, emperors Yao and Shun belonged to the first category, while Cheng Tang and Ji Fa belonged to the second. Today and the previous session, we are discussing the former, and we will talk about the latter in the following two sessions. The wisdom and virtue of Yao and Shun are beyond doubt. We know that in ancient times, when people saw the surplus wealth brought by the development of productivity, 
The first thing they learned was to claim it as private property. However, as rulers, Yao and Shun chose abdication, passing the throne and the country to capable individuals who could bring happiness to the people, rather than leaving it to their own sons. It is an example of not exploiting the people's resources, a principle that is extremely important both in ancient times and today. Now let's explore how these characters are written in the three scripts. I'll start by practicing with you on the water writing cloth, and then I'll demonstrate using ink and raw rice paper.
As we wrap up our session, I hope you found it enjoyable and insightful. If you have any questions, comments, or simply want to share your thoughts, don't hesitate to leave me a message. If you find this session informative, please remember to give me a thumbs up. Also, be sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss out on our future sessions. Discover, learn, and create with us as we bring the best of Chinese culture to the world. Join us at Ink Different Studio, where art meets heritage. Thank you so much for joining us, and until next time. For more information, check us out at inkdifferentstudio.com.